Hi, Blair McKenna here, president of MXM, Medallia's partner to the fitness industry. As you might know by now, if you're going through this uh, course on customer experience, all we do is customer experience in the fitness industry. We help companies uh, understand their customer experience. We use technology to measure that customer experience. That data gets operationalized, um, and then we help them improve customer experience. So we see hundreds and hundreds of clubs and um, how they um, how they improve customer experience and a lot of the best practices that go with that. So that's what this uh, course is about, is uh, the best practices. This particular one is for personal trainers. And although the concepts in this will apply to any position in any club, and we encourage every position to watch this, and people start to understand more and more that that customer experience is about every aspect of the club. It's not me as a personal trainer. I deliver a great experience and therefore the experience for my customer is done because they have a lot of other touch points in the club and they see a lot of other things from floors to windows to equipment and you know how do they perceive whether those things are dirty or clean. All of that is part of the, uh, part of the customer experience. Trainers, um, let's start with this. Everything you do is communication. Uh, how you walk across the floor, whether you move at the pace of the business, whether you engage with other people other than just your client, and everything that you do is watched and sends a message. So everyone in the club um, will observe trainers to validate their opinion about that particular club or that particular brand, and they'll cast judgments about that positive or negative judgments about that brand and that club based on what trainers do. So now to start with, I do not know how your personal training department is managed. Um, I don't know how you're incentivized. I don't know any of that. But I do know you. I do understand trainers and I know concepts um, and practices that will help you and it will help, it will help you improve your personal brand and it will help the club improve uh, its brand. Okay, uh, I'm going to introduce you to three kind of uh, key things here. Um, social proprioception, clicking, and filling your pipeline. Let's start with social proprioception. So as a trainer, you know what uh, proprioception is, or you should know what proprioception is, right? It's, the, it's this awareness of where our body is in space, and oftentimes, you know, we'll, we'll look at a professional athlete and say, you know, he has great proprioception. And that means that, you know, when, when Mike Trout is, is up to bat, he doesn't have to look back at his hands and that bat to know that it's perfectly in the slot. Or, you know, when you, we have seen videos of Tiger Woods mid-swing hear a noise and he, and he stops. And so every pro athlete in, uh, in every sport has great uh, proprioception. I know where my limbs are in space without having to get feedback from a camera, a coach, or having to look at it. I just intuitively know uh, where I where I am in space. Okay. Social proprioception. Um, knowing how you're being perceived in space. So uh, we, we coined this phrase in order to uh, train our trainers on how to be more aware. So let's take level one social proprioception. Level one social proprioception is that I understand that there's a circle around me and my customer. And that if I'm interacting with my client in a way that benefits my client and, I, and, I, and I'm friendly and I, and I know what I'm doing, I'm competent and I'm kind and, uh, and I motivate and inspire them, I know that I'm building a relationship with that person and that they may well recommend me to other people and, and that can help my business, right? That's level one social proprioception. Level two social proprioception. I certainly understand that within this circle, I'm, I'm, I'm working with my client and building that relationship. But I also know that this member that just got on this bench over here next to me um, is now sort of within my communication space. So level two social proprioception recognizes that if I also validate this member, they're going to have the same view of me that my customer does. And here, here's what I mean by that. 
uh, I'm working with my customer here. I see somebody get on a bench over here that I don't know. And I turn and I say, well, good morning. My name is Blair. I'm one of the trainers here. What's your, I haven't seen in here before. And they introduce themselves back to me. Great. Have a great workout. That's all I need to do. That's level two social proprioception. Now, this person, what do you think that person is doing? They feel validated by the trainer. that They, they, they feel that they were important enough that the trainer wanted to recognize them and, inter, and introduce themselves. And it might be that you offer a tip to that person. Okay, here's what I've heard from trainers before. this. Now, 100% of my attention has to be with my client. Um, no, that's just not right. 100% of your attention has to be um, in the environment because you are being read in that environment. And you can completely focus on your client. And I'll tell you this, your client is going to appreciate, it validates back to your client the kind of person you are when you touch base with that new member that just, you know, got on that bench next to you or is doing lunges and you gave them some correction. Your customer will appreciate it. So level one, they're, think of a circle around you and your client. Level two, think of a circle around you and your client and the awareness of the people that are within uh, voice and reach of you and that you're validating them and that's building your brand and it's building um, the brand for the location. Level three, social proprioception is when you're holding in your head all the time that, yep, I can build with my customer. Yep, I can build, the, I can build a relationship with my customer and the people around me. Level three is as you do that, you have an understanding that the you know, 55 year old accountant that just started and hasn't exercised in their life and is 50 pounds overweight and is on a treadmill 60 feet away, just observed your behavior and just made a judgment about the club overall. And that is level three, social proprioception. And, and it's so important to be aware of all three levels and how your interactions are informing at all three levels of the organization. Okay, clicking with people. Um, this comes from the book Click by the uh, Braffman brothers on how people um, instantly click. And I'm going to start with um, complimenting. Right? So uh, oftentimes, we compliment people on, on their results. And I'm going to encourage you to compliment people on their behaviors before you compliment people on their results. So for example, really want to click with somebody and maybe you've observed a member that's been coming in consistently and working really hard. Uh, and maybe uh, they have a goal of losing 30 pounds, but they've only been coming in for a week. I will tell you that it's very important for people to see results well before they lose the 30 pounds. They need to feel like they are getting some kind of result and you can support that by um, complementing their behavioral results. So for example, that might be uh, going to a member and saying, hi, I see you coming in here every day. My name's Blair. I'm one of the trainers here and I gotta tell you, you work hard. You come in and you consistently work hard. You also have selected difficult exercises to do, and that, that helps you progress faster with some of these exercises, like squats that you're doing. Uh, by the way, that's one of my favorite exercises, and if you ever need any help, you just let me know. That's it. Oh, by the way, um, you look great. So instead of just complimenting on the result, you look great, be aware of the behaviors. It could be, wow, you come in consistently. You really work hard. Um, you've chosen the toughest exercises. Uh, you're consistent, you're, re you're resilient, you have a lot of grit, you have all of those things when true. Uh, and when you complement on those behaviors, immediately creates a much deeper connection than just complimenting on the result. Okay, that's one key on clicking with people. And, and we're gonna bring that into this, uh, to this third piece on, on filling your pipeline. We have seen uh, multiple companies shift their personal training departments from just a focus on um, sales to a focus on clicking or, or connecting. So think of filling your pipeline as um, 
the number of clicks that you can get in with people. And there's a couple of ways to do that. Uh, we have seen some clubs when uh, the trainers are not working with a client, they wear a, a different kind of shirt and it might say, ask me on it. And they have their business cards with them. We have seen one group tell their trainers to specifically not sell anything. Your job is to uh, take a cleaning rag in a bottle, go clean stuff and click with as many people as you possibly can. And when they, when they say that, here's what they mean. All you're going to do is offer some help or some assistance. Bob, I love that you're doing that exercise. I think I can make it more efficient for you. Let me just show you something. And if I don't know Bob, I'm going to say, hi, my name is Blair. I'm one of the trainers. If they say hi and they don't offer their name, you say, and what's your name? Bob said, my name's Bob. Nice to meet you, Bob. I love that you're doing that exercise. It's one of my favorite exercises. I'm going to show you a way just to make that a little bit more efficient. Here's what I want you to do. You know, here's an anterior pelvic tilt. Here's a posterior pelvic tilt. And I want you to do this. I want your back like this. And now see how much different that feels? Awesome. Great job. By the way, here's my card. If you ever need anything, let me know. That's it. That's the, that's the connection. And to get that and to get as many clicks in as you possibly can. I'll tell you something else about clicking with people. I did a couple of things there. I introduced, I got their name, I repeated their name back, but you know how often you should repeat their name back? Uh, as long as it doesn't start to seem weird, right? I mean, you've heard, you've seen where people were told you got to repeat the name back. Uh, well, Bob, how are things going today, Bob? It's nice to meet you, Bob. It, it, that, that's, that's not right. You do it in a course of natural conversation in a way to, uh, to, to remember the name. Um, when I said that's one of my favorite exercises, I was doing another key thing from the book Click. I was finding commonality. And this is another powerful way to get um, deeper in a connection with someone is to find commonality. And I mean, it can be literally anything somebody wearing a University of Washington shirt and say, oh, you know what? My son went to University of Washington. You've just connected on a deeper level. How do you like your iPhone? I got mine. I really like it. What apps do you use? Well, I use these apps. You know what? How do you like that one? I just downloaded that one. I'm telling you, that also is commonality. Anytime our natural instinct, according to the Braffman brothers in Click, our natural instinct is to want to create these tribes constantly. And the way we are wired to create tribes is to find commonality. And in today's world, commonality can be anything. So filling your pipeline, click with as many people as possible. Don't try to sell them something. Make sure they have your information. Offer to help them later, but you're trying to find commonality, complement the behavior, and you'll fill your pipeline. Okay, three things in this toolbox. Social proprioception. Be highly aware. Know that everything you do is communication. Uh, click with people. Uh, complement the behavior and find commonality. Filling your pipeline is getting out and clicking with as many people as you can. And when you do that, you build your brand and you build the brand uh, as a whole. That's it. This is about e excellence in customer experience and personal trainers have a huge role in it. The more that you participate out on that floor, the more that you complement behaviors and notice people's behaviors, the more their perception of their own results will be positive. And those perceptions of those results can be positive in the first week, not when they lose the 30 pounds. That's it. I'm Blair McCainy, and we'll see you on the next one.